Can this connection between livability and economic vitality occur in a city without Portland's obvious assets? What if you live in a place with real economic, social, and environmental problems? What if you live in a small town, very much on the brink of disaster? Susun City, California, a small town of about 25,000 people with a recovering downtown business district, new mixed income housing, and a waterway full of fish. Midway between San Francisco and Sacramento, Sassoon City today looks like a perfect place to live. But six years ago, it was quite different. The channel that cut into the heart of town was severely polluted and clogged with silt. The waterfront was inaccessible, crowded with dilapidated warehouses. A residential apartment complex called the Crescent was overrun by drug dealers and City Hall was in a trailer. It's no surprise that in 1986, Susun City was voted the worst place to live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Around that time, Jim Sparing became mayor, and I asked him what the city was like when he took office. Part of the town was like a war zone. The rest was uh, just a dilapidated old town that was yeah. decaying at a tremendous rate. Mm -hmm. What was this neighborhood over here? Then? Well, the Crescent neighborhood, it was a crime-ridden neighborhood. It was a four-block area that was taking up about 52% of our police budget and effort. And that four-block area just cast a shadow over the whole community, no matter what we did in this community. Sassoon City was a mess. They decided things had to change. They had to bring themselves back. But where should they start? Sparing surprised people with a single bold stroke they would replace the trailers that housed city services with the new city hall. But it would be in the historic downtown, right in the heart of the city's troubled neighborhoods, looking out on the crumbling docks of the dying channel. You know, th these are times when people don't trust government very much, right? <laughs> that's, and that's for sure. How did the people react to that well, development of city hall? Th there was controversy first. We had one council member that uh, actually sued the, the city council and you know, had uh, a stack of petitions signed by citizens asking us to stop the project. But we were fortunate to have political leadership at that time that, that had the vision of, of what City Hall was going to do for mm -hmm. the community. And plus, we really didn't have anything where our citizens could come down and do business. They were doing business in mobile trailers. Yeah. And we wanted to give them a building that they could be proud of and uh, something that the community could build on. And that was the whole uh, emphasis. As I understood it, you could have put City Hall on the other side of the tracks, on the other part of Susan City. Yeah, but how does that deal with the cancer that we had in the community? And how does that help us develop uh, uh, the potential of this waterfront? And uh, by the city abandoning this area, I think it sends the wrong message. The mayor's bold stroke was a powerful signal that Susan City was serious about coming back. But one building by itself was not going to solve the problem. They needed a comprehensive citywide redevelopment plan with real money behind it. Sassoon hired a director of redevelopment, Cameron Najumi. What was your strategy? What did, what did you actually start with? There was no doubt in any, anybody's mind that the question had to be dealt with. And no doubt in anybody's mind that uh, the waterfront was Sassoon's assets. What wasn't quite clear to Sassoon was uh, the strategy, how to get there. A very important uh, uh, element of what we were trying to achieve in the downtown area was to establish a strong sense of place. Like Portland, Sassoon City realized that quality design was the key in restoring a sense of place. They hired the Roma Design Group to help visualize a new Sassoon City. Architect Boris Dremoff led the design effort. How can we make the uh, town center the heart of the whole Susun community and give it the identity? And the waterfront area was the unique opportunity to really focus the energy of that entire district. Ultimately, a vision for the whole town center area developed. I don't think it happened the first day we met. It was part of a dialogue between the community, ourselves, and the remainder of the staff of the city. They wanted some of the character of the older neighborhoods. They wanted friendlier streets. They wanted to have uh, those characteristics that they found in that 19th century part of the downtown area. 
Just blocks from Main Street, big problems in the Crescent neighborhood needed to be addressed. Some felt the answer was to wall it off, literally. Instead, in 1989, the city decided there was a better way. Sassoon City bought the property, and with the cooperation and consent of the tenants, offered to subsidize their rent for four years anywhere in Northern California. The way was then clear to tear down the Crescent and sell the land to a developer willing to build a totally new residential community based on design guidelines that would help to create a renewed sense of community there. One thing we wanted is we wanted a front yard orientation. We wanted front porches, and we wanted to bring the people out to the front of the house instead of in the back. And that's one of the reasons, as you can see, you've got these pockets for parking. You don't have streets just lined with cars. And the architecture, it's a Victorian architecture, and it goes with the old town of Sassoon. So as we transition into that part of town, it's very consistent with the overall plan. And, mm -hmm. and so you're not looking at different neighborhoods developed with different architecture or different design features. And uh, the whole concept here has been a pedestrian orientation, kind of friendly and get people outside and get people mm -hmm. to know their neighbors. The Victorian Harbor Project replaced the Crescent with market rate housing. But the city, committed to having a true mixed income community, redesigned and revitalized low income housing next door to the new development. This was a real challenge. How do you keep a, a low to moderate income project in the middle of your showcase project? Mm -hmm. And how do you blend and how do people have confidence when they buy that house that it's not yeah. gonna the neighborhoods aren't gonna deteriorate? Mm -hmm. How? And well we've done it through design. Yeah. And and you can see what's happened is we've built features in here that uh, people have taken pride of ownership in it. And it, yeah. Uh, so we've been able to, you know, give them uh, a neighborhood that, that they feel like they're part of. It's, it's their neighborhood. Well, I have to tell you, I haven't seen too many communities where um, that level of housing right next door to a subsidized housing community would move and sell as fast as the, it has here. Is that a function of the market, uh, the need well, for housing? You, you know, I, I think it, it's been a commitment made by the, the city. Yeah, and and, and crime way. is down. Uh, well, crime, when we tore down the Crescent neighborhood and rehabilitated this, crime was reduced by 34%. No one thought that residential redevelopment and a new city hall would be enough to save Sassoon City. They needed business, they needed jobs. So the city became its own redevelopment agency, building on its strengths. It bought substantial amounts of land where its roots were, on the waterfront. And to encourage small business to come back, it restored its historic main street. Tom and Donna Bland own the Great Sassoon Coffee and Trading Company. Well, this coffee tastes different with the sugar now. It tastes better with sweet a little bit. Well, it's just, it's just because people are getting fine like You can look and see it that the, uh, the downtowns around uh, the country that, that are successful. The thing that draws them and the thing that creates a sense of excitement in downtown is, is not uh, the shopping mall atmosphere, it's, it's the, the historic atmosphere mm -hmm. of, of the downtown. The, the quaintness of the buildings, and of course here we have the water uh, to, to uh, play off of on the other side of the street. We could have gone to one of the shopping centers, but decided no, that we wanted to be here. And I'm glad we made that choice. We might not be as growing as fast as some areas, some coffee houses, but we've got the uniqueness with our shop, its history, the history of the town, and our garden in the back. Sassoon provided basic design services and incentives for Main Street businesses to improve their storefronts. To rehabilitate the nearby waterfront, the city ripped out the old warehouses. It dredged the harbor and cleaned up the water. It provided streets and utilities. It built a marina, a civic plaza, and a waterfront promenade. And it rehabilitated an historic train station. The city cleared and prepared the land for new businesses. They offered architectural design services, low interest loans, infrastructure, and reduced red tape. Changes in zoning and other incentives also encouraged entrepreneurs to live above their stores, like the old days. Babs Curlis was the first, opening Babs's Delta Diner on Sassoon's waterfront in 1994, the kind of place where everyone has a coffee mug with a name on it. What made the difference for you as a person whose interest was in having a business that worked, having a 
successful business. So what, what were your concerns? Well, two things for me. It was my, because I wanted to buy a home. Well, this way I got my home and my business both. Small businesses uh, know their business very well, but uh, real estate development is a complicated process that they may not know much about. And that's why our process is set up to assist them every step of the way. Without the role that the city and Cameron's uh, agency and himself have taken, uh, how could uh, a small business person like Babs go in and put the parking lots and, and think about the streets and think about all these things that are really not part of her uh, life? No, not at all. I never worried about it. I just knew he was going to take care of all that. I, I think anybody that doesn't take an opportunity to come in here is really making a big mistake. They really are. This is right here. It, the opportunity is here. This ability to redo the, the, the town all over again has given us the opportunity to uh, do a well-planned project where parking is in the right place, landscaping is in the right place, the relationships between the different uses are uh, properly laid out. And I think in long term, uh, adhering to this plan, uh, Sassoon will be uh, unique more so uh, because of that. And I've got uh, just a lovely place to live. i got a beautiful view, and I've got meeting lots of new people. And one of the things that impressed me more than anything is when I was building, the whole town was watching. I mean, they were just all excited about it. Customers would come down, they'd tell me what they were doing down there that day and what was going on. And I even had them come up to me and say, thank you. Thank, thank me for building to help get the scene back on its feet. There's an obvious question. How can such a little town with so many problems afford all of this? Well, the simple answer is they did it the old-fashioned way. They borrowed it. $58 million in municipal bonds, a real stretch for a place like Sassoon City were it not for a handy development tool. In 1991, Sassoon City declared the entire sprawling city a redevelopment area. That made it eligible for something called tax increment financing. Here's how it works. The city borrows more money than its present property tax base will support, betting that new growth in property tax revenues generated by the new development will be sufficient to pay off the debt. It's a gamble, like putting City Hall in an unexpected place. But the biggest gamble in Sassoon City was the willingness to take a hard, honest look at themselves and then deal with change. One of the things that happens to you is you, you think in, in terms of what the bureaucracy can do and it's, it's just a, a long tradition of, of red tape and, and thinking and how you approach things and the first thing you want to do is get out of that box and start looking at things creatively. Get people that have, have that vision or people that are creative and innovative and start taking some of their advice. You can't turn it around though, can you? If a community takes the initiative, identifies where there are areas of the city where transformations can take place, uh, they can in fact achieve uh, that goal and it is an achievable goal and therefore from that standpoint Susun is important because it's a model that you can in fact affect change and you can affect the quality of the environment that you're in and you can have something to do with it you're not just the captive of others who will in fact dictate what the place is going to be like. 